Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Thursday night tasting here with the Whiskey Exchange. Uh, this evening, we are joined for an evening of fantastic space side whiskey by Keith Crookshank and Susan Colville from uh, Ben Romick Distillery. So, if I stop this mysterious spotlight thing, hello, folks, how are you doing? I'm doing well, yeah, very well indeed. Excellent. So, um, we're streaming out on Facebook. We've also got a load of people here in the Zoom room with us. If you're watching us on Facebook and you have any questions, please pop your questions in the comments and we'll bring them through. And as ever, folks who are sitting in the Zoom room, please let us know your questions. We'll bring you in to ask them. So have an evening of six great whiskeys and learn a load more about this fantastic space side distillery. So first things first, Keith, do you want to lead us off by just telling us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about the distillery? Yeah. Um... Obviously, I've been at the distillery. I'm a distillery manager at the moment, yeah. So I've been at the distillery since 1998. So the distillery was mothballed for 15 years. Bought by Don McPhail, that good family, and they um, put life back in the distillery. Passed in 1993, and we started producing in 1998. And that's when I came to the distillery manager boy. I was the first distiller here for two years, and I took over as manager in 2000 so i've had the privilege i would say of of seeing everything that is is developed through over the years the first release of the whiskey from the the gordon mcphail era and all of the whiskies up to now so uh, yeah it's been quite an experience man and boy for me anyway quite a privilege to be able to, to be right there at the, at the very start with lots of stories in, in good times as well, very good times. So, and a lot of good times to come as well. It's one of the, it's one of these strange things. If you're not a young distillery, but at the same time you are a young distillery, because it's only really been the last, however, was it twenty four years? I think I can't remember. I'm rubbish on dates, but you know, when did yeah, you open? Nineteen ninety eight. We started producing uh, summer ninety eight. We started producing so it was nineteen eighty three. The cell was closed under uh, Scottish Malt Distillers ownership. So it, it, yeah, it's strange, it doesn't seem that long ago in 1998 when I was thinking that that would be 10, 12 years before we start bottle. Honestly, whatever. But it's been 22 years later and all this lovely whiskies and obviously so much good colleagues to work with. So yeah, it's been good, good times, yeah. And also, just so you know, you, you know who's there sitting hiding in the background. Hello, Susan. Can you say who you are and say hello. So, hey, I'm the visitor centre manager. Um, I'm literally just here to make sure Keith doesn't say anything that he shouldn't. But uh, it's definitely Keith's tasting, and I'll just jump in if if I have to. Which is why I'm sitting at the back hiding. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, um... Yeah, sometimes I, 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 I probably give away secrets and stuff like that. So the plant team likes to keep a leash on me and make sure I don't give away all the, all the, all the gems and all the secrets. But yeah, it's, well, it's I, I make sure the uh, the laptop doesn't fall over or anything like that. So thank you yeah, for yeah, looking yeah, after everything. Yeah, well. oh, cool. So anyway, so we should probably jump on on, on a whiskey to start with to, to give everybody something to drink while we're having a chat. So what whiskey are we going to start with this evening? Yeah, well, we've, we've six whiskies uh, for the tasting tonight. We've got three in the, the core style and three in our contrast range as well. So then we'll start off with the first whiskey is going to be our, our Ben Romick, 10 years old. Now, this whiskey was the first aged Ben Romick statement that we took out in 2009. Uh, the whiskey is matured in uh, fast for sherry. Fast for Berman Cast is a marriage of both that whiskey is small, 43%. It is chill filter, uh, filtration, but it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a gentle chill filtration. So if you cool it down cold enough, it will kick a slight haze to the sphere. It's a very gentle chill filtration. Most of the range is unchill filtered, uh, apart from the, the three core, but we do have a quite a gentle, it's a kind of a, something you want to feel is, is always done. Mm -hmm. yeah, with all whiskies as a gentle filtrage, no, uh, no colouring whatsoever. There's no need to colour the whiskey. It's a that colour for a certain reason. If it's a bad one mature, it will be light on. If it's got that all or also sherry influence, you will get that rich 
gold and amber colour from the three. So the first one is our ten year old matured in cherry. And yeah. is no. probably more yeah. of a cherry influence, so it heads to her F fast before having a little whiff of, of the Kentucky thrown in there as well. So you've got a lovely marriage of the both the whiskies coming through. So it was a first aid statement, so it was it was quite a big thing for us at the distillery. Probably not a huge thing for the industry, but you know, we produced in started producing ninety eight, so uh, we did have a, a few bottles before that, uh, some special whiskies, uh, but this was a first aid statement. So on the nose, it's got that straight away you've got the, the rich fruity character coming through. There is a, a hint of smoke in there. If you know the brand, you'll know that Ben Roman is what we call, uh, it has a very traditional, elegant smokiness. And it's something that it runs right through the whole brand. It's when we started the, the distillery, we had to look at what style of space side we wanted to produce. So we produced a, a, a space side style of what was reminiscent of the 1950s and 1960s production. And you can say, what does that mean, Keith? What really does that mean? What it does mean is back then, wasn't really a lot of single malts back then, to be quite honest with you. But whiskies were made on space side. The really was not space side character. But the whiskies back then, all the distillers would have normally had their own floor maltings. The whiskey would be quite robust. It would have been mature in cherry cats as well. And you would have had that elegant smokiness coming through from the floor maltings. And that came from samples that Gorman Fail have from the catalogue of space sites they bought uh, under the Gorman Fail. Uh, they, they have these beautiful space sites that they bought uh, from the 1950s and 60s. They had these samples and what they always got was this rich, malty character of freeness, but an elegant smokiness that you can actually taste. And we uh, took that style back and we have the, the peating level is it's lightly peated, so it's about 12 ppm, which gives you about four or five roughly. Uh, 12 ppm on the malt, it's four or five in the liquid itself. And on the nose, it's very, it's very light, it's very elegant, but with the addition of water, it really comes to life. The water really just opens up that, that <laughs> elegance of the smoke and really gives you as much smoke as little as you want. I normally add a little bit of water, to be quite honest with you, to my dead 10, as we call it. And for me, that really opens up the fruitiness, but for me, more of the the malty character. You can smell that. It's almost like a biscuity character coming through an Ovaltine or Horlicks. And that's quite specific to our style of, of uh, mashing that we have. We've got a very specific Semi cloudy wort, and that gives that lovely malty biscuit character coming through as well. Um, but you've got the lovely sherry notes on the nose, fruit, nut, chocolate, delicate spice, green apples, all these lovely makes you hungry, doesn't it? Speaking about like that, but yeah, and the sherry cask gives all that lovely vanilla uh, character coming through as well. Not too smoky to be quite honest on the nose without the addition of water. But as I said, when I add just that touch of water, it just gives, it just opens it up. Um, not all whiskey is like water, and you don't have to add water, as you know. Never add water, never add water to your whiskey. Well, yeah, something to do, something to do. It's really up to yourselves. Some whiskies take kindly to it, some don't, some need it, some don't, and sometimes your palate doesn't really want it. So there's no right answer to that. But certainly with this Ben Roma, you can just smell it straight there. The fruitiness comes out and the smokiness as well. I always find you know the this one it, it's so much it for me it sort of says what the distillery is about. You know, you said about how when you reopened you had to you have to choose the style of spirit you wanted to make. We I actually have a question already from um, from uh, Graham Fraser in, in the room. And the question is, what, when you reopened, when Gordon McPhail came in, um, if, for those who don't know, Gordon McPhail is an incredible independent bottler um, based just down the road from the distillery in, uh, in Elgin. And they've been bottling incredible whiskies for, for years. And they finally 
have their own distillery in uh, in, in Ben Rome. But when they came in, outside of that, you know, choosing that spirit that they they wanted to make, what other changes um, were made compared to the way the the distillery used to run? I know it'd be closed for a little while, but um, anything? Yeah. I think the the advantage we had was we started from a blank canvas. We didn't. There wasn't really any equipment left, and that didn't influence the, influence the style that we wanted. Um, just because it was there. So basically we didn't copy any of the style of the size or shape of the, previously Ben Roma wasn't really a single malt. Back in the pre-1980s, it was used in an antiquary blend. Um, so we, we didn't really want to copy anything that was there before. Um, the stills were twice the size of the stills we have now. It was unpeated. Uh, so all the equipment was put in there just to give, we re-engineered it to give a, a specific style that, that, that pre-1960s there. So that's it would be really, nothing really, I mean, but it, it was amazing that when we, when we started producing 98, um, the company that owned the distillery before kind of gave us some new make samples, okay the samples were well, pre-1983, they were all new make samples. But it was strange how the malty and the, the, the spicy notes of Ben Roman were coming through in the new make. It was different, don't get me wrong, but it was almost like a, there was a thread linking the spirit from, from you know, 15 years of a, of a gap or even more. But that wasn't really intentional to a certain extent. We, we, we chose this specific style because the Gordon McPhail, the Arctic family, could do that and it was always their dream to open up the fast space side distillery and have a very specific character of space side related back to decades before. Yeah, it is one of the things about Ben Ramek is that when people talk about space side whiskey, you talk about distillery char uh, regional character and things like that. I'm not a big believer in regional character if anybody out there has heard me talk about it before I get quite rude about it quite often. But Ben Ramek is one of those distilleries which really just says we understand the character of space side. We're going to take that and do something different with it because you're definitely a space side distillery, but you're not the same as the rest of them. No, no. I mean, I think I think space side's evolved from from what it was uh, back in the fifties and sixties to then the the, the 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 opening of the single malt market, and then space. I mean, the, the, obviously, engineering on the floor malt left most distilleries. And the fuel that was used was they didn't really use boot back then, so it wasn't really introduced. So it kind of just evolved to where it was, unpeated, very elegant, some of the finest whiskies uh, in the whole of the, the Scotland, if not the world, that were produced in this area, as is uh, Eileen and such like fantastic whiskies in Scotland. So yeah, I, I think we, we just turned back the clock. We just didn't, we haven't reinvented space side, but it, it's our. It, it, it's, it's our space, it's the style we want to, to, to produce, so it's not there, there is a, a space site that represents this. Peter Whiskey does represent as Pete. It's not exclusive to Ireland, though they make some of the finest whiskies, the beautiful whiskies. It's not exclusive, you know? So, and, and it's great, we can take back to that sort of elegant smokings, and it works so well with the space I can't do. You know, if you're a space I drinker, you, and, you, and, you, and you just like a little bit of smokiness, Ben Roman is fantastic. If you're a, a, a style that likes the more peated style and, and a West Coast whiskey drink, I like Ben Roman is probably quite lightweight for the peated level, but it, it, it has both. It has the space side on that, that, that lovely uh, smoky character in there as well. So it's, it's just a, a great balance as a space side, we feel. And the 10 year old, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a it's in our core range, it's the, the, one of the main styles in the core range. It, for me, it represents everything that you smell and taste and feel about the distillery. Everything, the mashing from the, the way we, we, we mash, the way we ferment the distillation, the maturation process, and all the way, you know, we, we, it's a handcrafted style here. It's not lip service that's come to distillery. You see why we call it handcrafted. The guys are run up down the stairs, well, don't run up down the stairs, they go up down the stairs. <laughs> they, they do everything manually, nothing happens without them 
do it and they control it. There's a lot of skill involved, a lot of training involved when we train the distillers up because we are solely relying on their skill and experience to create the whiskey that we've we've got here. And it takes it takes quite a while for them to, 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 to learn the learn the craft. It, it, no different to the way I did it when I, I started out. So and that's that's all we do. We just pass on what I've learned from the Al Heads, I call them old heads, experienced guys. So so that's the the, the ten year old. So it's uh, yeah. It, it's very close to me. The ten year old. It's it, it just represents everything that is about the still. It, it, it is my it's my go to drum. Well, the same comments have popped up in the in the in the chat. We've got um. David Sturk, he's like one of the best 10 year olds around. You know, it's, it's great that it's not a light and it's not like a classic space side. But a thank God it's not, it's got its own character, isn't like everything else. This is what makes it special. You know, it, it, it's some of this, 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 there's a few iconic whiskies out there that you can pick out of 50 whiskies. There's maybe five, six, five, ten whiskies that you can pick out straight away yeah. because they've got their own iconic flavor, nose, and it's just specific to that. Distillery for whatever reason, the way they produce it, the equipment, the people, whatever. And bedrooms no different. You can pick that out of 30, 40 space size. Easy. The smokiness does help. I will admit that. But yeah, it, it has quite a, a good well, Thinking of that, uh, I'd like to move on to the next whiskey because this is a whiskey that I am still to this day almost embarrassed that I didn't recognize. So our, our next whiskey on the mat is the. Uh, um, the oh, see if we can if I can get that so it's vaguely in focus. Ben Romack, fifteen year old, is our next one on our list. Is that that's the next one on your list, isn't it? Yeah, Ben Romack, fifteen year old. Uh, okay. Two thousand, Susan. Two thousand fourteen. Yeah, twenty fifteen released the, yeah. the Ben Romack. It is basically yeah, fifteen year old. The Ben Romack, fifteen year old, is basically ten year old. Just with a few years added on, we were asked why. Well, why didn't you take it at a twelve-year-old? We looked at the, the whiskey at twelve-year-old. There wasn't enough uh, point of difference. Is that how you describe it? Between the ten and the twelve, it was too subtle. When it became fifteen, it kind of did what we thought, hoping it was going to do. We, I mean, it, it's almost like open up Pandora's box. You just don't know what's going to happen when you open a new distillery. You can only put down what you think and, and, and with the equipment and such like your experience on flavour. But we hope the 15 would would be enhanced by the sharing maturation. Uh, and, it, and it has, um, it, it's really matured and mellowed. The sherry has really become more dominant, but in a, in a nice way, not in a really aggressive way. It, it, it's balanced with the, the smokiness, smokiness is a little bit less aggressive in a nice way, of course. But the, the fruity notes are just, it's balanced, sherry, vanilla. It, it's got a, a, a kind of a, a zestiness to it, which is more of your, 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 your spiciness, your orange and such like. But you could really just nose it all, all day because it's just such a balanced whiskey. And it's one. It's won many awards, allegedly, you know. So it's done very well as a 15-year-old, but it's on the nose, it's fantastic. But for me, I think it's the finish that is by far unbelievable that once you taste the 15-year-old, you get a lovely fruity tart coming through. Um, the plum, the apples and such like. Um, you have the maltiness, but the the finish just doesn't stop. It's just. Well, it's the thing for me is, you know, I, we had it won our whiskey of the year competition last year. It is the whiskey exchanges current whiskey of, of the year. As a very brief sneak preview, we, we opened nominations for our next whiskey of the year next week. So it's, it, don't worry, you've still got a couple of months where you're still our whiskey of the year. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, uh, it, it's just fantastic. It is just, uh, it's, it is one of the, it's the best 15 year old I've tasted, and I've tasted some good 15 year olds in space. I think you on them and fail. Um, but they have got one especially fantastic 15 year old from Dufton. I won't name the brand name, but from Dufton. 
and it's unbelievable. This one is way up the number. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, as I said on a, a little video blog, it's won more gold medals and some more fara. So it's, uh, I think it's doing okay. I think yeah. it's, it, it's maturing in the right way from the 10. You can see there's quite a, there's quite a difference between the 10 and the 15, but you know that they come from the same um, um, heritage, the same, the same man. Uh, so you say the Ben 10 is your equal to the, the 15 year old is, is mine, you know. Um, being in the visitor centre pre, pre-COVID, uh, you always get asked, what's your favourite? And every single time, without fail, 15, 15, yeah. 15. It is it's exceptionally popular amongst all of the, the team at the visitor centre as well. And it is my favourite of the entire enrollment range. So. Yeah, it's, a, it's quite a... It's not a lightweight drum. It, it just fills you up. It's it's, it's, it's hard. Like, you just got to taste it to be able to describe it. It's just a fantastic, a fantastic whiskey, you know. So it bodes well for um, the next whiskies that will come out, which I can't tell you where they're coming out. Anyway, yeah, from 10 to 15, it's been fantastic. So that will really, um, it, it's encouraging to know that, that it, it's maturing and mellow and giving so much character from the from the cask. Again, Sherry and Bourbon uh, marriage, but the extra five years has really mellowed and matured it. Smokiness is, I think the smokiness hasn't tamed. I think the Sherry character is just, it, it's just, it's just shouting a bit louder. And I think because the smokiness is kind of there, you can taste it more than I'm tasting it now on the finish. And um, so the finish on this whiskey just, it just won't stop giving as far as I can see, yeah. But again, 43%, very general filtration, and um, a fantastic whiskey. Yeah. I, I did, um, when we were doing our nominations and the, the, the voting on our, on our whiskey of the year, I did one of these, the first time I ever did one of these sorts of tastings with just me in front of a camera talking about whiskey at a camera for 45 minutes. We were sitting there going, oh, I'll never do this again. This isn't the sort of thing that we do. Why, why would anybody want to do a virtual tasting? Yeah. Um, but I was going through them and noticing the tasting. I got to the Benaronic 15 and I just went, I know what this is, but I can't remember what it is. And it just stood out in the range and it was my number one. Um, I didn't know it was in the pack. I was very deliberately hidden away so I wouldn't know so I could do the tasting. Um, and it was during our tastings for the um, for the competition. Uh, we do a, a first choice, second choice voting scheme. And after the first round, you know, we had, we're down to, I think it was two or three whiskeys. And almost every second choice whiskey for the people who didn't vote for this first was this. It was, it was just such a very, very uh, solid winner. It was marvellous. So, We've got a couple of comments from folks on Zoom. We have a, um, from Doug, we have a, they notice, hearing his brother notices that it changes a lot if you leave it in the glass. And uh, he was saying, you know, people always talk about this and he, th- he thought maybe it was just for people who more refined palates and stuff like that. But no, when you leave it in the glass, it really evolves. You know, for me, yeah. there's some sort of chocolatiness, that maltiness comes through load more if you leave it for a little bit. But it still yeah. has that big, as you said about the fruit and the, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm it's, quite pretty whiskey. It's got a lot of complexity. You know, mm-hmm. and you, need, you need to allow it, it just keeps on, as I said, on the finish, it just keeps on giving. And it's, yeah, it, I would completely agree. It does change quite a lot, and the flavours keep developing, even you know, in the glass, once you pour it, even with the addition, a slight bit of water. Yeah. So, but that one, yeah, it's, it's, uh, Probably less water, if any, for that one to be quite honest. But it's, it really is down to your own personal uh, yeah. preference. Yeah. Probably less of no water. Yeah. yeah. And for me, as an everyday dram, the 10, yeah, the 10 is the one which I, I go to. Uh, that Absolutely. has been ever since I, I first visited the distillery 12 years ago, I think, something like that. You know, you know, long time back before I worked in the whiskey world and, you know, had a bottle of the original organic sort of thrown at me and it was my favorite whiskey of the year for a while and just yeah. sort of seen the development but this is the the, the tense very much that yeah. lovely sort of freaks me so this one just adds that a little bit extra special occasion so yeah, are, yeah definitely but so that's, a, you know, the sort of, that's the sort of core what you're doing with the distillery or core flavors and sort of style 
but looking at the rest of the drone, we've got some different little bits and pieces and some sort of development on those as well. So what's our next whiskey we're going to have a try of? Next whiskey is our 2009. It's a cast strength bin -omic. So uh, previously we did have a high strength bin -omic, which was 100 proof, but we replaced it with this cast strength in 2009 vintage we have at the moment. We did previously have 2008. Uh, this one's bought at 57.2% 2009. Uh, it is basically 10 year old, but it is a vintage uh, release. Uh, it just works well. People might say, why did you change from 100 proof to cast strength? It, basically, the truth is it just works better for all markets around the world. 100 proof probably became you know, problematic in the States and such like because their proofing system is, is different to ours. So we had that. Um, but the whiskey is, it, it is pretty much identical to the the 100 proof, it just doesn't have that slight addition of water to take it down to 57. Or 57.1 was 100 proof, so this is 57.2. It's just the high strength offering that we have of Ben Romick, and it, it just gives you that um, that intensity of sherry on the nose. Uh, it's not really that, if you try it neat, it doesn't blow your it doesn't blow your lungs off, as I say, your ears. It's, it, it's very, very soft. It's not really that, that little overwhelming, even at full strength. But obviously with the, the slight addition of water, it allows to take out the, the, the lovely sort of stewed apples, especially for the vanilla note as well. We have it, pears, these type of characters that you get. Um, Even with that little bit of water, the, the smokiness is not, it, it hasn't got the same smokiness as a 10 year old. Uh, it's the same whiskey, uh, basically, but it's a cast strength offering. So you'll see with the, the, the more additional water that that smoky character will develop. And, and the, the, there's a reason for that because obviously the, the female characters at lower strength do become more volatile. That's all your scientific stuff there. So it does, the more additional water, your phenol can as it's become more. Um, it come out of solution, become more. So um, this gives you that, that sort of choice to add as little or as much water as you want. But it just shows the, the intensity of the sherry notes. It's such like, it's extremely popular, the cast strength version. In this very specific markets, it is that so. So, but yeah. And it's very, it's been very popular, I think, in the visitor centre as well for, for uh, the customers. They, they do like the, the, the car strength. I've got a um, quick question from the, uh, the Zoom room uh, from John. Uh, is, is this from a single cask? These are the small batches to a certain extent. So you've got maybe just a few casks. So you might have maybe three or four casks we use for that. Um, um, but it's all it's all small batches we do for this, but not single cast. We do do single cast for certain customers around the, the world and such like. But um, this is it's really small batch this stuff. So yeah. But it's uh, so if anybody's uh, after a uh, a single cast Ben Romick, I hear there's a, a retailer called the Whiskey Exchange, who are a fantastic one for their twentieth anniversary up on the website at the moment. Uh, some taste notes from some guy called Billy on the page. It's, it's marvellous. Just search for Ben Romick. It'll be the first hit. Be lovely. Um, yeah, but no, we've got yeah. a couple of comments about this. We've got um, uh, from DJ Hux. We've got a, being an Isla fan, I was more partial to the 10, but it didn't have the oomph he was after. And he said, this one really delivers. Um, yeah, I think he's, uh, I, he's quite correct. It depends on the, I mean, I love uh, Isla whiskies. I love that. It's, um, it, if you're looking for the big punch, then for smoke, certainly the 10 gives you gives you that to a certain extent, but nothing compared to what you get from from the West Coast whiskies. But this one, yeah, it's, it's got a lot of a lot of punch to it in a nice way, of course. I well, said so Chris on the uh, on the Zoom chat says this is the whiskey he uses to tempt Isla lovers away from uh, Isla whiskey. Mm. So. Yeah, temper you'll tempt you'll tempt the tempt on Isla. I think I think we'll always go back to. Yeah. To their true love, as they say. Yeah. But yeah, 
it's, it's, it's uh, and hopefully we can tap space side whiskey drinkers who are you know, ardent space and whiskey drinkers. Oh, I'm not touching Pete, I'm not touching Pete. Oh, I can't touch that. Yeah, they try to bend Roman to think, yeah, that's, that's nice. It's nice, it's, it's there and it tastes really good. But if you throw them a big hit from the West Coast, you know, you are absolutely going to scale up to death. But these whiskies are fantastic once you get, once you, once you get past, you know, once you get through the clouds, if you're taking off, it can get a bit bumpy going through the clouds. Once you get through the clouds, you're through the blue skies. And I think that's drinking peated whiskey. It's kind of, it's kind of like that. Yeah, I remember a gentleman from my old telling me that one. Yeah, so. Um, but yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's definitely a big hit of the, the car strength there from like vintage 2009, so. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's impressive because, as you're saying, you know, it's it's a similar whiskey to the ten year old, but it's just so different with that extra intensity of flavour and and the way that. And so I always tell people when you when you're adding water to things, it's not just it makes everything everything in there a little bit quieter. It changes the volumes in different different yeah, ways. Yeah, the addition of water is it can be the addition of water can be a very good thing. It can release really a lot of flavours at low strength. Uh, it can't be the opposite as well. It can drown your whiskey. And you've lost it, it's gone. You know, once you are water to drown, you can't get it back. It's gone, that's it. You can't extract the whiskey out the water out anymore. So, yeah, addition of water, whiskey water really does, it changes it. It, 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 can, it, can, it, can, it can change it in a good way. And then it can, it can do it in a bad way as well, but that's really, uh, that's the mistake of whiskey of, of being able to know your own palate and know what you all individually like. Because the flavours I like are the flavours that you like. So, and casting gives you that ability to do that. You can add no water if you want to take it and, and taste what it is as it comes out of the cask, or really add water to your own. You know, well, along with that, I've got a question here from Doug on the on the uh, the room, and he says, "Do you find adding water to the glass results in a very different whiskey from adding water when you're bottling? Those two different times you can add water." Yeah, it's a good. It's kind of a, a good question. Making whiskey is all about adding and taking away water. That's what we do all the time with with whiskey. We add it, take it away, add it even from the field. You know, just add water to make it grow. And then you malt it, you dry it again, and that goes all the way through the process. We make the whiskey and we hold we add more water on too. Um, but yeah, I mean, in Gone with Fail, we have a, a policy of, of adding water to the whiskey, but we leave it under water for a, a few days. So we, and, and that's something that, that Mr. George Ackert, the grandfather of the, the, of, of the the, the company or the, the directors now, their grandfather, he always added water and he left it in the vat. And I would imagine the thinking behind that is to the, the water and alcohol, they don't mix straight away together. Um, even by you need them to sort of bond together. And I think they call it hydrogen bonding and it's shrinkage so that you need time for the, the alcohol and the water to actually come together. And, you know, that, that, that makes sense. You can see why you do that, you know. So, but, I mean, I mean, once you get the whiskey into a glass, it's really up to yourself. You'll know, I, I can't say you should have more, but you shouldn't have more. It's really down to your own palate and you make that decision. Certainly don't drown it. <laughs> no, you will ruin the whiskey completely. And all sherry whiskeys, you probably need to be very careful with that one as well. Sometimes they can fall to bits. They don't need water, if at all, to be quite honest here, but you need to be very careful with all sherry whiskies that they don't uh, taste it rubber or leather. And I've tasted an old whiskey with additional water and it's like, it's like chewing an old tire. I've never chewed an old tire before, but I can imagine that's what it would taste like from the, the smell of the whiskey. So yeah, yeah, you just need to be very careful. And one more watery question for you um, from Graham. Um, so your water source, where you grab all your water for your uh, whiskey making, it, do you use hard or soft water, Ben Rama? Well, that's a good question. 
the water that we use here is soft, but it's very specific to the distillery. And it's probably it is soft water in the whole scheme of if you look at the, the soft water throughout the UK. But it's not soft as you know, a lot of the water in Scotland, but it's very specific. So it, it is on the soft side that we have here. And the water source we have has been the same water source since they started the still way back in 1898. We were, we, we've upgraded the pipe work since then. It's one of the it's been a 20 year project for me at the moment. Um, but amazingly, the, the, the drawings, and we, we got some drawings from the previous owner of the original pipe work from 1898, and the drawings were done on linen. And that shows you how old they were done. And it was amazing to have these drawings actually on linen of the original pipe work and, and exactly where the source was and where it flowed. We've just obviously upgraded from being fire clay to food grade pipes now so we can really retain and future proof the water supply, which is it's the lifeblood of any distillery is protecting the water source. And every distillery has their own water source from wherever it comes from spring or, or, or just whatever you know um, and and it's very important to us but it, it's the water is soft it's on the soft side uh, that we use for making this excellent so we've had a play around with you know your sort of standard whiskies and time to look at something a little bit different now i think so what's the next whiskey that we have on our list the next whiskey on the list is one that you mentioned billy is Ben on organic. Um, so bravery, organic. before you before you carry on, and um, yep. the folks who are tasting along at home, uh, it's this one. It's just the Ben Roma 2011. Unfortunately, our lovely labelly uh, people. I'll have a chat with my mate Rocky later on. He's the king of labelling. Missed out the word organic. So this is the Ben Roma 2011 2019 release. So this is the organic 2019 release. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. There we go. Keith, oh, Keith. Ben organic. We. Uh, the organic came from our previous manager, director of Three Nacker, back in 2000, I took over as manager with Ian. We were a very small distillery. We still are the same, but we produce more now. Uh, it's still uh, 1.5 tonne batches, which is, we fall into the, the craft distiller, or boutique they call them. I don't want to be called boutique, but craft distiller of that, that size, and there's many of them in Scotland now, you know, producing, Fantastic, unique whiskey. So we had the back then because the size that we could be slightly innovative. And it was it was Mr. Lee that decided that we should let's try and, and produce an organic whiskey. There wasn't really much organic whiskey out there, uh, but there wasn't a whiskey that had been fully certified by the Soil Association, which is one of the biggest accreditations for organic food and drink. Uh, in, in the UK and in Europe. So we had a meeting back in 2000 and said we want to produce an organic single malt and certify this. So we came up, we looked at the whole process and we looked at the, the raw materials, the, 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 the segregation between the cleaning procedures, everything, the type of casts we use. Um, so we started producing organic whiskey in October 2000. Such a long time. Um, so we started producing back then, small batch. Uh, we bought organic. We bought organic malt from one of our maltings, our local malt in Inverness. And then with the whole process certified and uh, right through even to the maturation process, then the issue we had was the casks. The malted barley was come from our farm. No pesticides, no fertilizers, etc. You know, uh, and we had to look through the whole uh, system of the separation, segregation, the good cross, say cross contaminate, we not contaminate whiskey, you know, and um, but we couldn't have non organic with organic. So we almost started the distillery from scratch, as if you start a new distillery, because we couldn't use head and tails from the previous distillation, which is normal for a double batch distillation. It's gone, so we could use that, so any fates had to be removed. And we started with a fresh mat of wash. We distilled it uh, three times before we could take off a spirit cut. 
Uh, it's unpeated. We decided to not have the peating level in here. We wanted to make it as not or organic as possible. If there was any subtleties, peat is very organic anyway. If there was any subtleties that came through from the organic process or whatever, we wanted to give it the best opportunity it could rather than maybe fighting for its position with the element of smokiness. And we knew that the Ben Roman was organic was going to be bought relatively young because of the cask we were using. That's the second point I was going to get into. We 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 could have used barber casks or sherry casks and we would have had to clean them out and such like and use them. We would have got a derogation to use non because you can use a percentage of non-organic materials if they are crucial to the process and maturation kind of is crucial to the process of making whiskey whichever the problem we had was because maturation it contributes to anywhere between 60 and 70 percent of the flavor whatever you would argue on that that it made it difficult for us to use x sherry and x marvin and say that it's truly organic true its roots so we chose american virgin oak the wood came from uh, McGuinness in, uh, McGuinness in uh, Missouri. The wood came over and the, the castle made in space of cupage with a very specific toast and a very specific charm level so we could control what that cast gives out and not gives out too much because American virgin oak can be quite aggressive in what it gives you. Um, so the very of the organics is bald anywhere between five. In eight years, I don't think we've done more than an eight-year-old. So it's, and that's mainly down to how quickly it matures and how much character it takes from the, the cask. It's almost, for me, it's almost like a mid-Atlantic whiskey. There's so much bourbon-esque type flavours coming through there um, because it hasn't had the influence of being mellowed with whiskey prior to that. So the vanilla notes come through, yeah, the toffee, banana, all that lovely estuary notes that the American white oak gives. And the colour is got such a lovely colour for being a relatively young whiskey, but it's mature. And you can you can taste that that lovely delicate vanilla. And even on the palate, even on the finish, it has it's not an extremely long finish, but it has the lovely sort of sweet fruit coming through as well. It's bottled at 43%. It's unchill filtered. And you're going to say 43% teeth? Oh, wait, why is it not kicking at age at 43%? 46% um, isn't a button you press and it suddenly kicks at age. It doesn't work like that. It depends on the whiskey. But if, <laughs> if you put the bed rubber into a organic into a fridge or hard water it's going to kick a slight hit there because it's unchill filled so um, yeah ball at 43% but it's it, it's there's no smoky character in there it's fun no peated whatsoever so it's not just the organic venom of organic it is our unpeated offering so it demolishes most people buy it because they just love the taste of the whiskey and that's kind of what we're here to do. People buy it because of the flavour. It, it has that 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 support and accreditation for the soil association, which is very important. It absolutely is. Um, but it's um, it's just such a different whiskey than the rest of the range. Fantastic whiskey, lighter. It's maybe a more lighter style than the previous whiskey you just tasted. <laughs> you would think they were from different distilleries, really, but it's. Uh, and we've made batches of organic every year or every other year. From there, we move from buying born Benramic organic malt to single farm. Um, and the, the barley we have grown every year comes from a farm um, on Speyside or Bamshire or Murray. It's just outside, not far from where I live, in Keith. And it's a local farm that we. Um, Purchase the barley, he goes out of the universe, and then we, we produce one batch 
of uh, organic every single year. So yeah, it's it's one that's, that's very close to me as well because I was here when we went through the accreditation, making the new make, and then seeing the bottle. So very different, unique whiskey, and one that is part of a contrast range. So the contrast range is whiskies that are very different to the core range and shows me in Romic in a different land. So I, I tried the first batch of this when I first visited the distillery and it's the one I bought and took home. And I, I think, do you have like, did you do a smoky one for the second? Yeah, yeah, I thought you'd bring that up. <laughs> we did a very special batch once and it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a, yes. Not saying an experiment, we did a special batch we did once. And it was, it was the peated version of it. Uh, it was a fantastic whiskey. Pablo, why was it smoky? It was unbelievably smoky. And um, so we did that as just a special, special edition. But the smoke really was, it was beautiful. It was like a bacon sandwich, you know, with a two sauce and all that, all that nonsense. Yeah. But yeah, it was a fantastic whiskey. But, you know, it, it was something we tried and it, it, it didn't sort of fit in with the whole, the, the delicate characters come from the cask and such like from the, the vanilla and the toffee and the bananas and the flavour that comes, that estuary flavour that comes through. But yeah, that was that was quite a few years ago now, Billy. Oh yeah. Uh, wow, that was that was a lot of years ago. It'd be it was great to find a bottle of that, you know. So I, I bought a bottle of the original one, then I bought a bottle of the smoky one because I liked the original one so much and it was good, but it just wasn't that you lost it in a, I mean it, and, it this is the first time I tried the organic in a long time uh, because it, you know, I thought, oh, it's the smoky. I didn't really look into it. And this reminds me of that first edition again. This is yeah, it kind of lost. The my, this is my kind of whiskey, this one. So, yeah, the smokiness is yeah. overpowered. Yeah. The elkiness that you, you, you came to love with it, the, uh, mm. the better organic. So, we're not the only whiskey that the slaves made organic whiskey, uh, but we were the first to be fully certified by the, the Soil Association. So it's, um, it's, it's just a lovely, lovely lighter version of the, the Vermont style. So really nice, really nice whiskey. Well, lots of lovely comments about this on, in the Zoom room. And the thing which I was really, you know, Doug pulled out the, the minty eucalyptus you note, and that's something I always get in um, yeah. American whiskeys. I get that slight mintiness, and I've always described this as being like Scottish bourbon. Not quite, but... It is. But uh, it has that, yeah, certain something. Yeah, it's almost like you know that, that smell of, of of pine needles. You know, you really get that kind of strong, um, and you get a lot of oaky character. It can be. It's something you need to be very aware of that you don't mature it too long, and it becomes really unpalatable because the the cask is just put out so much, and it becomes really, you know, the, the not that pleasant. But yeah, this um, yeah, we, I I have tasted all the organics that have tasted absolutely fantastic. You know, whether they can be I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's uh, it certainly works for Ben Roman that that, thing, that that style of cast and organic. Well, I have to say it definitely works. Look at the comments so far. Um, we seem to have sold a load of whiskey. So well done. There we go. This is the one everybody said, well, I bought a bottle of that now. Well, that's lovely. So uh, it seems to have been an all round winner. So I don't, well, I'm a big fan again. So I've got another whiskey on my shopping list, which is yeah. it's very annoying. My shopping list is very long already. And it's, I try to avoid drinking nice whiskey these days just for monetary reasons. So, anyway, should we move on to our next tram? Looking at, again, yeah. something a little bit different. So what are we going for next? We are going for another one of the contrast range. It's Ben Roman Sasakaya. Yeah, it sounds quite oriental, that word Sasakaya. But this is a wood finish um, in our range and it's matured. Uh, this is whiskey, is about eight years old. So I think it's about, I think it's about six or two. It's about six years in a barren cast. All our wood finishes are matured in barren initially and then finished off for you know a year two years um in a lovely wine cask this one is sasakai it's a red wine from um the tuscany northern spain spain northern italy um 
So and it's it, it's it's I think it's, there's a name for it. It's a Tuscan. It's a Tuscan. It's a super Tuscan. It's called. Now, I'm not a big wine drinker myself. I will admit to that. But this Sassacaya is a very very exclusive red wine. We have we have been it, basically the of Sassacaya is it's our one of our preferred. We finish this, one of our favourite wood finishes, it's one of our standard ones that we use time and time again. The reason for that is because it works so well for bedroom uh, It just allows the barbed and the wine cast really to marry together and come together as one. We don't want layers of flavours coming through, which sometimes can happen. The, the, the spirit or the whiskey and the wine have to. And sometimes wine finishes work and sometimes they don't. And some people don't like wine finishes and, and all, but this, we've done a lot of wine finishes over the years. Some have been fantastic, some have been not, not quite perfect. Still lovely whiskey, but it's really, it's trying to get the marriage to work. You really don't know until you try it. Um, but this one here, the sassakaya, the red berries, the cinnamon, the spiciness comes through, it's that ginger notes. With the luscious red berries that come through on the nose, the aroma is just fantastic. We have exclusivity on the bottle to have the Sasakaya logo on the back of the bottle. Unfortunately, we don't have exclusivity on every Sasakaya cast, but we can put the logo on the back of the bottle and it's an extremely um, uh, well sought after sort of the regard of whiskey in Italy. But it just works very well. The colour comes through, it's not super rich in colour, but the, the lovely luscious red berries and the ginger cinnamon comes through as well. It's definitely it's a, a little bit of pink on it as well. If you hold yeah. up to the light, definitely a little bit of a tinge. Yeah, it's a little bit pinky. That's the best way to describe it. Well, I've got a, a, a question. Um, why have you gone for 45% for this one rather than uh, your regular 43? Yeah, I think for the, the contrast range, we just look, because the are whiskies are very different to the style that we are really, really comfortable with and we know very, very well the cast and such like. And these quite often are batch releases. Uh, quite small batch releases. We looked at these whiskies and we will reduce them to different strengths and then we will decide exactly which strength we and if it's if it's a 45 or 48 or 47 then that's what it will be. Um, it doesn't always have to be 46 on your villain. It might not be good at 46 but it might be fantastic at 47 but like, it's just you just don't have that. So yeah but quite a few of our, our wood finishes, we do take the 45. It just seems to work quite well at that, that strength. But if it needed to be higher, then we would. It's all about the quality of the spirit, to be quite honest with you. So again, it's, it's unchill filtered, uh, and we mature bourbon, and then this one's like two years roughly, I think, in the Italian red wine cast, the Sassafaya cast. So, uh, Extremely popular, and it's extremely popular to say the visitor center as well. The visitors absolutely love it, and it, it really does sell. It just shows Benham again a different light, it's part of the whole contrast range. Well, I so said the first time I came up to visit, I went away with the uh, um, the organic. Uh, I drag my, uh, my, my, I don't know how to drive, so I have to drag people with me to drive me to places and then drive me onto the next distillery and so on. Uh, my friends I brought with me are not whiskey people at all, and they came up to, to wander around Benramic as well, and they went away with a bottle of this um, yeah. and converted to not only drinking whiskey, but drinking wine finished whiskey. And as yeah. someone who doesn't normally like wine finishes, even I have to admit that this is okay. So <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. Uh, Wine finishes are good. If they're done right, wine finishes are absolutely fantastic. If they're done right, um, wine finishes always got a crystal before them. They were there just to hide poor whiskey, poor maturation. Kind of isn't like that nowadays. Some distillers have crafted it. Um, 
There's one that's still on the tape, does it absolutely fantastically. They're one of the best white finish blue finish to do. But they match the cast with the, the whiskey. And that's the key thing, is to get that marriage to work. It's like any marriage, it has to work. You don't give it time. Of course you give it time. That's what happens in marriages. You don't suddenly you don't suddenly fall in love with someone, do you? It takes time for that to build up. And the marriage and the cast is no different whatsoever. You need to give it time. But sometimes it doesn't work well. And then you part them. But anyway, this one is pretty much the core we finish that we do. We do time and time again, and it seems to work so well with the bedroom, and it's so so popular mm-hmm. with uh, our customers right there. Well, you um, so you say this is your core one. Do you have any more uh, different ones, cool. interesting things coming along? We normally only ever have two wood finishes at any given time. We don't want to have multiple wood finishes and completely confuse the consumer of what Ben Romick is. Ben Romick is the core style. That's what you want to, to take away, but we want to offer something different as well. So um, we do have others that are maturing away, obviously. I, I can't tell you what they are because uh, well, I could, Susan just got out of the room. So I could just tell you all the secrets that I could. <laughs> I won't. I've probably got a marketing director that's just glued to the screen at the moment. But normally two wood finishes, we have an any, and we've done quite a few. We've done Marsala, Madeira, Port, and these are all quite common. We did a Tokai wood finish as well, which Tokai is obviously a, a sweet Hungarian dessert wine. We did a couple of them, really, really sweet. Lovely whiskies, you know. We did it with an old Ben a 21 year old. We did a young one as well. I actually preferred the young one, strangely enough, because I think it worked so well because the Saturday Tokai cast was extremely sweet. Um, that it worked well with the younger Ben Romack and they both kind of complement each other. Whereas the older Ben Romack, I think, was so mellow and, and, and soft and mature that the, the sweetness of Tokai kind of maybe uh, argued with that a little bit. It was just a little bit too, 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 it became too sweet. But that was many years ago with that old. But yeah, we've done so much wood finishes uh, in the past, not only two a year release, but this is the one that comes back and it's really a, one of my core wood finishes that, that we do year on year. So, um, and we, it, we sell it, we have to allocate it because it's, it's such small batch and it gets sold through quite, quite quickly uh, throughout the markets uh, around the world. Oh, a quick question about the Sasakaya from Facebook. Uh, Lisa Richardson asks, um, do you reuse the Sasakaya casks after uh, you've matured whiskey in them? Cracking question. Um, we don't normally use them. The reason for that is normally, in my experience, once you use the white cask once, after that, it's pretty much gone. There's nothing else it's going to give after that. I've seen whiskey matured uh, twice or finish it, and it, it just gives it gives nothing. The cask has given everything the wine cask. And you've got to remember wine casks and, and whiskey casks are very different. Wine casks are made in a certain way to mature wine. So it's like, and wine and whiskey is, is completely different. So normally you get one hit with a finish. And that's it. If you use it again, it's not going to give what you you actually want. So no, no, we get this cast, cast fill, and we fill, and that's that's kind of it. And after that, and we don't really get much more from the cast beyond that. Excellent. So should we, should we move on to our last whiskey? Right, the last whiskey is another one in our contrast range. It's Ben Romick peat smoke. Um, you don't have to really work out what this one is. It is a heavily peated um, Ben Romick. And we've been doing a heavily peated Ben Romick since I started here because we have a space site that has elegant smoke in it. The whiskey is fantastic, it works so well. 
it was obvious that we were going to come out with a heavily beaded because the smokiness does work. We've been doing these since I think 2000. We started taking out the heavily beaded burn on one. And we've been doing it every year since then. They are done on single batch. So we normally get maybe a load or two loads of malt, uh, which doesn't last us very long. We did last us long back then, but now it's only a week. Back then it's three weeks production because we've, been, we've increased production over the years with the demand for the brand. Um, so we, 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 we do these single uh, batch peat smoke and they're all different, every single one. We don't ask. We ask for a, a minimum peat level um, and we get what we get from the malt stuff. So we've, we've, it's gone from, I think, about 40 ppm all the way up to... We've had a 35 once. There's one year that the maltsters were struggling to get the peat to do anything for some strange reason. And we had a 35. And the highest we've had is 67. I think 67 we've done. Um, and they're all different single batch. So every time you buy it, you'll have a vintage. Uh, non chill filters, this one's, this one yay is 46%. Um, matured and fast full of cats, normally. Um, and we have, we do these every single year, so the peter level changes. Um, what hasn't changed on it, at the start we were concerned that this would just pretty much be like a, a space out version of, of iron. And that's not what we wanted to do. Um, the first one we released was 51 ppm. And we were actually criticized because it wasn't smoky enough, wasn't peaty enough. But it was sweet and smoky. There was very little of that really heavy phenolic compounds that you associate with the beautiful whiskeys from the West Coast. And that's kind of what we wanted to do. We accepted the criticism it wasn't. Um, ripping your ears off and going down screaming that it's just so smoky and everything. It was perfect. It was a space side heavily peated whiskey. Always sweet honey, always there, uh, especially on the palate as well. And it's always remained sweet. Uh, we don't know why that is, um, but it, it's just it's just worked for us as a, a heavily peated space side. And we've had We've had 67 ppm in there. That's a big hit, 67 ppm, by any stretch of the imagination of whiskies throughout Scotland and the West Coast. But it still remained true of being very sweet and honey notes coming through. But obviously, 67 was, it was quite smoky, yeah, but it didn't have that phenolic ban that you have on, on a few stories on Space Out. So, um, but yeah, it's it, it's been such a a successful whiskey first, the, the peat smoke, you know, and it's our. Um, oh, yeah, no, it's great, and again, it's one of these. I've tried some different levels of peaty whiskey that you guys have made over the years, and this one is it. It has that softer sort of benramic side underneath it, with the peat on top, sort of coming together. You, you get those different sides of the distillery, but. I've got um, a quick question. Where's it going? Oh, here it is. Quick question from Graham. He's wondering: Does it take longer to clean everything after you've run a uh, a smoky batch? Um, we don't actually clean everything after the smoky batch. Believe it or not, we the way we do it because obviously Ben Ronick has twelve ppm throughout the year, so it's smoky throughout the year. We do these single batches here, so we are very aware of if we're going to be heavy repeated we do the light repeated on the heavy then back on the light repeated again you can call it a medium repeated if you want it depends how you do it if it's 12 ppm on heavy repeated the only one we do will not do a heavy repeat and then go into organic in case there's any carryover through there but we make sure that we we, we cut we cut the mash from certain points so we know that we've got a clean cut between and the fillings as well we've got a clean cut between what is standard uh, Ben Oran, the 12 ppm, and then the, the heavily 
the heavily peated as well. There might be a slight carryover, but the carryover is very, very subtle. But we will make sure that we never put the peat smoke before the organic rice for sure. You might have a lot less smoke before the organic. Okay. Yeah, that makes a little bit of sense. So, uh, yeah, um, yeah, yes, but the organic, yeah, we do make sure that everything there's no um, remnants coming through of, of the, the core bedroom of the organic. Well, I've got one more question for you, and it's not so much about any specifically about any of the whiskies. Um, it's a question from, so I'm just trying to see who it is again, um, from Steve in the Zoom room. And it's one of the things that we were having a chat about before we started, and it's about the fact that you guys have got a very new look. Um, and Steve, um, Steve just asked, he really likes the new branding, and he was wondering, how's it going, and why did you feel you needed to change? Yeah, yeah. I've got a new book as well, so it is, yeah, so what changed it? I think we obviously bought a better from 2004. And we had a very specific style. And it changed, that changed from the original Ben Roman that I remember when I started. And we had that for, for many years. And like every brand, you need to refresh the brand and re look at the brand. And over the years, we've tweaked it and added bits on. But um, two years ago, we decided we we're going to have a complete rebrand, a refresh, a look at it. And what we did, I first saw. The images of what we were going to try and achieve and what we've done is we've actually went back to what really the story represents and the, the likes of the, the history the color everything you see on the new packaging really represents what ben roman is all about the font for the letter is it's actually what the font really was when we started at ben roman it's the same font that was in the Pagoda roof. The colours are exactly the Ben Roman colours you see at the distillery, the white label with the, the, the sequoia red or chimney red, we call it here, um, for the letter. And it's really gone back to quite a, a traditional, but it represents everything that is um, close to the distillery. And I've been at the distillery 22 years. So if Believe me, if I didn't like the packaging, I would be the first one. And I saw it two years ago, and I knew straight away that this packaging is what represents Ben Roman. If I didn't like it, I would say I didn't like it. Trust me, I'm the first biggest critic. But as soon as I saw it, it's exactly what it represents everything that Ben Roman is, should, and will be. So it's, um, it's just fantastic packaging. It will take time. For everybody to love it, but I mean the response we had was great, and, and everybody will will love it exactly the same way. It's, it's like you, you take the bottle outside and you look at the distillery, and it's exactly what it should be, you know. And you have to evolve packaging as, as time goes on, you know. And and but always keep true to what the distillery and the brand represents, and that's exactly what all the good brands do. And we've done this with the the packaging. I absolutely love the packaging. I really do love the packaging. And I've been, as I said, I've been here 22 years, man and boy, and I know what the distillery represents. And as soon as I saw it, yeah, it was a, definitely a winner for me. Um, absolutely, you know. So and you'll you'll see the packaging rolling out uh, throughout the whole range, Billy. At the moment, we have just the core range at the moment. Uh, contrast. I think contrast is next season. Yeah, there'll be a, a second phase to the Kennedy launch with the contrast whiskies um, later on in the year. So. Yeah, yeah. And then we have a we have a we have a special release uh, later on. I'm not allowed to tell you what it is. You know, I'm just dying to tell you, Billy. But I'm Stop not. talking. Stop talking. Stop talking, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> special release. Watch the social media, and you'll see. That's me. That's me. That's <laughs> I, I won't ask you what's coming up next, then, because I can I can see a vaguely disapproving look appearing in the background already for me. Even thinking, <laughs> I love that. I love this, but I'm making it so nervous. Something. But anyway, yeah, I know I'm well. But yeah, well, watch this space. It's all I can see. Well, well, thank you very much for the chat this evening. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll, we'll wrap up on Facebook. We'll hang around for a little bit to try and poke you to give up some more secrets to our folks who are sitting in the Zoom room about uh, this thing. But um, I say thank you very much for taking us through the range and sort of introducing us a bit more to the distillery. 
as I said, you know, I've been a fan for years and I've tried stuff now which I've forgotten that I liked and stuff I haven't tried for ages. And it's been a really great sort of reminding of me, you know, somebody from you've been liking for the series for a while, of what makes Ben Romick different and why it is we, we gave you our best year of the year, why it is a well deserved award. So, congratulations again. Thank you very much. And, um, Good luck. Good luck yeah, and oh, I say, I'm, I'm, we'll see you again soon, I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, in yeah, real life, in person. It's, 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 once life becomes normal again, we'll come back up the space side and we can, we can just have a nice time. Excellent. Cool. Thank you very much. And uh, everybody else who uh, is watching on Facebook, thank you very much for joining in this evening.